now you live in with E, with Eric Sermon. Yes. And you go on tour with EPMD. Yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tour baby, man. I'm a, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on tour. Um, well, I, I, I go to live with E. Uh, even with then, y'all got to understand, like EPMD, with, they, they was popping on Strictly Business. I came in around at the end of So What You Saying album, uh, uh, Strictly uh, uh, Unfinished Business. I came in at the end of it, and um, he was living in a one-room, run-bedroom apartment with, with uh, the road manager, Bernard, Cool B. Everybody know Cool B. Big up to Cool B. And uh, he asked me to live with him in that one-bedroom apartment, man, and he, he never slept in the bed. He always slept on the couch. So I was allowed to sleep in the bed, and when he wanted the bed, we switched places. It was like a, you know, a love seat, a couch, and a bed. We all switched places, and we did that shit for like three years, yo. Slept on the couch for three or four years, but yeah, I'm on. I'm living with E. But that full time in that one apartment, we strictly music. Waking up, breakfast, everything is right there in that one bedroom apartment, and we would bang out and go to the studio. We was banging, and I went on tour at a young age. I was like 19, 20. So I'm like a real tour hip hop baby. I ain't learned no morals and shit. I ain't learned all that shit you're supposed to learn at 20 years old about morals, about women and respect. I mean, I respect women always, but I just didn't learn all that shit. It was just moving so fast, you know? Yeah. So you had a, a freestyle that you did on stage, like an A through Z freestyle? Yeah. Uh, was that a, it was the uh, not a freestyle, but it was actually the verse from uh, Hardcore. That's what it was called. I okay, think. yeah, I remember that. And uh, that was the rhyme from there that really introduced Red Man and shit. You know, I because I wrote that rhyme like that because of K Solo. You know, K Solo set the bar. You know, that's my brother too. Big up to K Solo. We born on the same day. That's why everybody thought we was brothers. And that is my brother from another mother. Bottom line, he'll bust his gun for me, I bust my gun for him, and that's brothers. And, uh, you know, and he set the bar uh, with the spelling. And I was a new nigga, so I knew I had to come in. I just couldn't come in rhyming and shit, so I had to kind of set a bar. So, yeah, that was around from there. Okay, you're talking about uh, K Solo's record, Spellbound. Yeah, yeah, he was, when, he, when, e, when EPMD introduced him, he was spelling. So when they introduced me, I knew that I had to come correct on with a style or something that was catchy because he already had set the bar on as a new artist coming from EPMD spelling. And that's what he was known for. It was something new and fresh. It wasn't just rhyming. And he was murdering that shit. So I knew I had to kind of set a bar too coming behind solo. So yeah, so that's why I, I was like kind of playing with the alphabets a little bit. Okay. So... You're, you're rolling with EPMD, and then it's time for you to drop your first album. Yeah. Yeah, okay. um, rolling with EPMD, learning. Uh, even in between time, like, I was, I was still hustling a little bit, but I wasn't as much. So, you know, I had to find means and ways to make money here and there. And, you know, Biz Markey, that's my dude, too. Like, I've been knowing Biz for the longest. Actually, I went to Biz Markey first. I actually went to Biz Markey first at Club Zanzibar. I said, yo, Biz, I'll be rhyming and shit. I actually went to him first. But Biz was so tied up with the, uh, the Juice Crew that, you know, Biz was in the zone and he was getting money. He still get money, too. That's my own. He still get money. But long story short, um, before the first album came out, I'm on tour with him. I was just running around, getting money, hustling here, and I was running with Biz for a while, getting money. And that's when I really got kind of popping, running with Biz as well, um, right before I dropped that uh, EPMD joint, I think. Biz was taking me around battling. Like, I was going from city to city with him in the car, riding to other, uh, in New York. It wasn't Jersey, it was mainly New York. Aaron motherfucker fuckers out left and right it got so bad because you know jersey dudes we was about punchlines and shit you know and a lot of new york cats was a, was about you know positivity like rakim and big daddy kane it was on that kind of sh you know movement and i came over there yo 
one spot chased us up out of there. They was it was in Long Island and shit. I went up in that bitch rocking like I was like it was a whole gang of motherfuckers. I went up in that bitch rocking. They was like, uh uh, get this motherfucker out of here. Who he who he think he is coming in with that shit like that? Uh uh, nah nigga, we ain't nah nah. Get the fuck out of here. We ain't paying y'all. Fuck out of here, man. In other words, they was thinking I was too advanced and shit. They I, we was playing them out. But anyway, that's what I was doing to make money in between there until my album came out. And me and E was just building. Like, we was just such a tight unit. I was still living with E. I think, uh, you know, uh, we got introduced to, uh, you know, Def Jam liked what they was hearing. Um, and the album was about to come out. I was prepared for it. I was, it's just, it's, I, man, it's just so much in between there, man. For example, I, like, I don't like to talk, so I don't know how, I, I, I like to give y'all the real on me, on what really happened. Um, before I got down with EPMD too, because this ties in um, with Dev Jam, my boy Diesel Don, um, everyone knows him. If you know me, you heard of Diesel Don and the governor. Um, Diesel Don had a clique called Revolutionary Posse of Terrorists, RPT. We was like the first Wu-Tang before Hit Squad. Before Wu Tang, before all that, we was a uh, we was revolutionary posse of terrorists, and we was from out of Newark, and the crew consisted of like eight motherfuckers. Do it all, do from Lords of the Underground was one of them, and we was going to city to city battling. Long story short, when I started rhyming and shit, uh, Diesel Don, he was like the head referee, the chief of the whole shit. He took me to Def Jam. I seen Kenny Lee, not Kenny Lee. I forget his name, but he know who he is. We went in his office. No, he came downstairs, listened to my demo in the car that I did a, a couple of songs and said, yo, you dope, but we're looking for more of a third bass kind of feel because third bass was ringing right, right at that. Third bass was ringing the charts. And he was like, you know, we looking for a kind of third bass kind of thing. If you got a partner or something, I was like, you know what? Thank you for the opportunity. That's what ties into this. So now, when I'm about to come out with my album, before I came out with my album, we was getting material ready for my album to introduce me to Def Jam. I went back to that same office, to the same goddamn dude that I seen with my boy before I met EPMD. And he said, yo, you the kid that was up here my, like a year ago or something, right? With your boy in the car, I was like, yeah, that was me. That was the same dude. And I, and I had kind of the same rhymes, too, but just on EPMD beat. So long story short, they liked what they heard, and I got signed to Def Jam, and my first album came out. And Def Jam was so amazed that I went gold and better. They was like, how did this kid from Jersey go gold and better? Well, you know, La Queen Latifah... Tretch, Naughty by Nature, they was already setting the trend on going platinum and going gold. Like Naughty by Nature was banging the charts. So it was already a platform laid out for me and shit. So Well what was interesting about your album? Because cause I bought, you know, I bought that album. Uh like up until right around that time, like weed and hip hop didn't really go together. Right. It it was like you know, Dr. Dre would even, you know, said, I don't smoke weed or stress because that gives a brother brain damage. You know what I mean? And like even, even in high school, but before the album dropped, it was like the weed smokers was kind of looked at as kind of like the losers. Like the weed smokers would be just, you know, the dudes wearing the heavy metal T-shirts in yeah. the back. And uh -huh. it, 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 you, know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. It, it wasn't, weed wasn't considered no. cool. And then... Cypress Hill came out and you came out right around the same time, right? Yes. Cypress Hill, you know, was LA, West Coast. They were the first ones to really embrace weed like that on the West Coast, I feel. But you were the first one out of the East Coast to really embrace weed. Is, yes. that, is that a fair assessment? Yes, yes. And you, you definitely, that's why I fuck with Vlad. Um, first of all, I just did a show with Cypress, uh, like last week, and uh, you know them been them been my dudes for over twenty years, man. And and you're so fucking right because my my first of all, Ice Cube 
is one of my mentors, besides Slick Rick and KRS-One. Um, and I was so amazed over the first Ice Cube album, America's Most Wanted. And N.W.A. as a group is, is one of my top groups. Um, and when I heard Niggas for Life and America's Most Wanted, and I knew they was feuding. Um, if you listen to my first album, it's America Most Wanted Influence. Mm. If, if you listen to my album, it's Niggas for Life Influence with the skits. No one on the East Coast was doing skits. Nobody. Nobody was doing skits on the East Coast. And I, I embraced that. I was like, I love what they're doing. I just want to add my East Coast flavor to it. Um, Cypress Hill. When I first seen them on the High Times cover. First of all, when I first heard their album, I was like so amazed of how they embrace the smoking shit as I did on my album. They just did it to another level and from a different culture. Gucci's absolutely the boogeyman of hip hop. Like it's just certain individuals, you just know that at any given moment, it could go left. Right. Gucci's one of them. T.I. is one of them. I told y'all that before. I don't know why y'all keep acting like T.I. ain't Gucci level crazy. Or maybe <laughs> T.I. Gucci, is Gucci, Gucci level crazy. Gucci might be T.I. level crazy. You, you mean to tell me that if I walked up to your mother right in front of you and shot her in the face, yeah. and then I, I left the country, and you could never, you can't get to me, Hell you wouldn't no. tell the police? Hell no. I'm, I'm a, I'm, where your mama stay at? <laughs> 